Okay. So, in case of any uh, trouble with the uh, lecture online uh, communication, just let me know. Oh, okay. So I, I, in previous lectures, I just uh, went through the unique properties of laser, and I just discussed uh, what's the spectrum of uh, visible uh, light, how the spectrometers, the devices, analyzes a light source in terms of its frequency or wavelength and compared to the intensity and I discussed this also I discussed about the bandwidth of uh, a spectrometer or uh, or a, let's uh, to, to be correct uh, the bandwidth of a source light source so I told about this and what how, what the meaning of the bandwidth is in terms of the spectrum so I told you that uh, uh, if you have a laser source that means it translates into the uh, spectrometer's uh, signal that to have a very narrow bandwidth. But for other sources, uh, the bandwidth will be large in compared to laser source, of course. The laser source will have a very sharp uh, bandwidth in the uh, signals of spectrometers. I uh, told about the uh, uh, coherence time and uh, whatever you get the, the signal from from laser light source since I, I told you that laser is nothing but a, a you know electromagnetic wave and what is an electromagnetic wave it's oscillating electric fields and also magnetic fields but over these pictures only I will show the electric fields so this oscillation behavior if it's perfect it will translate into a spectrometer signal as a single sharp line like we see over here in math this means that you're just taking the Fourier transform of a sine wave and if this sine wave is like going from minus infinity to infinity plus infinity with perfect shape and it will translate to the very sharp uh, infinitely narrow uh, bandwidth in the uh, frequency domain but it, it, what you get the frequency the frequency domain in fact uh, in terms of uh, the uh, let's say uh, the device the device, uh, the spectrometer device, shows you the Fourier transformed uh, of the real signal. Okay, so in fact, what you're observing in the spectrometer is you're just translating the, the Fourier transform of a real signal that that is coming from the electric oscillating electric field of, of a light source into this shape that you know uh, what you read. In fact, in spectrometer is nothing but the uh, frequency domain. Or sometimes it's a wavelength domain, whatever it is. So, but you know, this is not the case for real life. And in real life, the light sources like uh, have a finite wave trains, like uh, some finite coherence time. And this will translate into, depending on the duration of this uh, coherence time, uh, some width corresponds to some width. And larger the uh, coherence time, the narrower the width, or the smaller the uh, Coherence time, the larger the um, bandwidth, so it will translate into. And there are some resources that for this bandwidth, some uh, sources uh, that causes this, uh, uh, you know, enlarging the bandwidth. One is that the short, uh, the short uh, coherence time, and the other is there are some these jumps, and I will discuss this uh, reason for these jumps later on. When I discuss the uh, microscopic uh, source of the uh, light, in terms of you know changing the uh, energy levels of electrons in a medium in, in in inside an atom or a molecule, and sometimes it happens that these atoms collide with each, each other. If if it's a gas resource, if it's a, a liquid resource, again there is this collision takes place. If it's a solid state uh, atoms, there are these vibrations that all these are causing these jumps okay all these collisions in liquids or gas if your laser medium is gas or liquid uh, because of the collisions uh, you will see these jumps these irregularities in the phase and uh, the same thing occurs for if you have a, a you know a solid state laser source like a semiconductor laser or crystal laser uh, these uh, uh, jumps occur because of the vibrations of 
the uh, atoms or molecules in, in inside so you know uh, this is the source for for again the coherence we call this time is the coherence the coherence is another source for making the signal in the frequency domain larger okay the bandwidth larger so if if you if you, there are some methods there are some uh, ways to reduce this decoherence then you get the narrower or sharper signal in the uh, uh, frequency domain uh, and the last thing was i was discussing that again it causing the uh, uh, larger bandwidth is the amplitude damping so and i i told you what the amplitude damping is if your uh, source is uh, you know kind of decreasing its signal in for some reason then there is this uh, amplitude i mean either you are going far away from the source or uh, your source is just appears one shot at a time like a flickering uh, light source it appears that this damping will occur and this damping will causes again in the frequency domain a lar larger uh, bandwidth okay so uh, i discussed about uh, the temporal coherence and uh, uh, you know uh, for for as i said for laser lights this coherence time is very long longer the uh, coherence time the better the laser source laser uh, and this is how it depends on the uh, the you know this relation is how the coherence time depend uh, is is translated into bandwidth in the frequency frequency domain. So uh, lastly, I think I was discussing about the, the second property that the high collimation or diffraction limited collimation or very small focus spot etc. These all five words the expressions in fact one and the same thing uh, when it comes to. Uh, it's describing the case so as i said that uh, there is only one resource laser uh, sorry light source that you can decrease you can you can you can you know this is collimated sort of if there is a collimated source if somehow you can put uh, a kind of thin lens you can collimate uh, you can just uh, make a spot size spot or bright spot out of this collimated light source and I was discussing about the size of this uh, spot. As I said, this is for laser light source. This is like in the order of lambda by two. Whatever the uh, wavelength you're using, uh, the lasers as a, the laser source, you get the minimum spot size to be uh, lambda by two. If this is like a 600 nanometer, and the smallest spot size you can get is going to be like uh, 300 nanometers. And this is called the diffraction limit and this uh, one thing is uh, this one thing one principle uh, is limiting you to view uh, like very small objects as as small as nanoparticles or small as atoms or molecules uh, you cannot see by a usual uh, uh, optical microscope and the reason is that not it is not because of the te te uh, technological difficulties or technological barriers that's uh, difficult uh, coming from the principles of uh, diffraction of laser uh, light sources and this uh, phenomenon cannot be uh, you know this this is the smallest that you can get uh, from a, a light source if you are using laser if you're not using laser like lead light forget about this never reach like a a spot size of the size of 300 nanometers if you're using 600 nanometers uh, red light you never reach 300 nanometers if you are using other sources other than laser like lead lights or other uh, incandescent bulb lights etc you cannot you cannot uh, get uh, the sizes which down to 300 nanometers if you are using a red light okay so this is called this is something also related with the spatial coherence. As I said last time, spatial coherence is about like how uh, coherent is your face is going uh, as the distance, not the time, but the distance. And the distance that you can get, a uh, maximum distance that you can uh, preserve this phase information is called coherence length. Okay, so. But the coherence length is trans can be translated into coherence time because coherence length and coherence time is related to each other because if you just multiply the coherence time by speed of light you get coherence length 
So larger coins length uh, can only be provided um, by larger coins time. If you get larger coins time, you get larger coins. Uh, special coins and special coins and the time coins or uh, uh, temporal coins are in fact one and the same. Uh, by looking at the equation and through this this, this equation the uh, phenomenon, then you will you can easily deduce that coins time and the coins length they are both one and the same thing used by a multiplication factor. Okay, so and this was the second unique property of laser. Uh, only with laser light you can get down to very small spot sizes, and only with lasers you can reach a, a resolution of on the order of the uh, wavelength of the light source. Any resolution uh, that you can get with the visible light, since uh, uh, for the visible light the minimum uh, wavelength is like around 400 nanometers, that translates into 200 nanometers at the spot size. So that means you cannot resolve any objects which are smaller than 200 nanometers by using optical microscopy. Of course, there are methods that you can picture them by using uh, like uh, atomic force microscope, electron microscopes, etc. Uh, but these are only uh, you know possible if you're not using light. If you're using light. In the minimum spot and the minimum resolution you can get is 200 nanometers with the visible light. Okay, so, uh, well, uh, as I said also that, uh, you know, there is no perfect collimation even for laser. And the collimation for laser, collimation you mean, I mean, what I mean by collimation is how parallel a light beam is. But even for laser, there is no perfect uh, parallel uh, light beam and if you're asking about this divergence angle the divergence angle is going to be uh, uh, again uh, proportional to wavelength and divided by this aperture size the aperture size d is the uh, laser source size if you have, if you have a laser like a laser device like in the shape of a cylinder you have this part that you produce this laser light, right? And the diameter of this spot, the source, is called D over here. This is the D, the aperture size. We call this aperture size. The aperture size is the size of, spot size of the, your laser device, okay? Whatever the light comes out uh, from a point, from, from a, a, a, like a shape of, let's say, a, a circular shape, this is a size of the circular size is called the aperture size. Uh, that means uh, you can get uh, you know very uh, desired uh, parallel beams or uh, collimated beams as you can get a larger and larger spot sizes as your laser. If your laser uh, spot size is large, that means that you can get uh, arbitrarily uh, uh, perfect uh, laser uh, parallel laser beams or collimated beams. Because this theta it depends on immersal related to the spot size. You got larger the spot size means smaller the divergence angle. If the divergence angle is small, then you get you know uh, uh, you approach a perfect uh, light beam which is parallel. Okay, so you know the uh, applications of this being uh, a parallel light beam for laser finds itself. Uh, applications like requiring very uh, sharp alignment and this happens for barcode readers and I don't know who got this uh, presentation for the barcode readers just uh, he or she should make a, a correspondence or relation between the you know uh, good collimation and why do we need the good collimation for barcode leaders to explain this? And communication-wise, of course, this is uh, making uh, having a very uh, collimated beam or uh, you know parallel beam is very important in communication, also in the radar. Okay, so <coughs> next is I okay I was discussing about this uh, you know uh, producing a very small spot size uh, uh, using the uh, laser 
Well, it's spot size, as I said, it depends on, on, on lambda, I said. Uh, uh, very roughly, I, I told you that, okay, spot size by using a laser light of uh, having a, a wavelength of lambda, you can reach lambda by 2. But in fact, uh, the true relation is lambda times f uh, divided by uh, d. Where here d is the size of your laser source in terms of the diameter. And f here is, f here you see what the f is, in fact, nothing but the focal length for that uh, special uh, thin lens that you are using to make this uh, focus spot. You're using many different types of uh, you know, lenses, but whatever the focal uh, length for your particular choice of the lens uh, will make uh, your spot size, they will depend on this uh, f. Larger the f, of course, uh, larger the spot size. Uh, uh, if you can get uh, a smaller, if you want a smaller and smaller spot size, you make this focal length uh, smaller and smaller. And this translates into uh, a larger size in the optical axis for the lens. For the lens, let me draw this uh, optical axis. This is the optical axis. The thickness of the lens along the optical axis, this one, the maximum thickness. If you're using a larger thickness, that means translates into smaller focal length and that also translates into smaller spot size okay so that means uh, like fatter lenses will produce smaller spot sizes that's why in objectives uh, we use uh, thicker uh, thin lenses thin lens means that its only edges are thin okay well uh, the name for this type of lens is thin lens but the only uh, the edges are thin but the uh, you know the optical axis its size the optical axis is large if you have a small focus uh, length so you know uh, basically what you get what you can get is this f divided by 2 f divided by d by is, is equal to 1 over 2 like at most you can get best at best so that's why i, I just uh, uh, gave you this lambda by 2 spot size if you're using a laser light source of lambda but the true relation is lambda times f divided by d. If you can get f divided by d, very small, then you can, this means that you can get this smaller. But of course, there is a limitation of this you can get. f divided by d, usually, in most cases, it cannot be smaller than 1 over 2. Okay? Uh, you, can, you can get this. But of course, if you enlarge d, and larger and larger of course there is a limitation on this you know you cannot uh, produce a laser light like having one meter diameter and it's very hard to do this okay of course if you can if you can do this you, the spot size will be very small but there is a limit on that so uh, this is the picture um, this is the case if you of course if you produce a very small spot size, that translates in technological uh, uh, applications, that translates onto uh, having compact disks of having larger and larger data capacity, right? If it, what happens in the compact disk? Compact disk has some uh, uh, dips and valleys, dips and uh, throws, right? And dips are produced by uh, burning the surface of the compact disc by a laser. Sometimes if you just burn uh, surfaces by using laser, uh, by just focusing laser on the surface, you can burn uh, the surface to form a well, okay? But the size of the well, if the size of the well is large, that means uh, in compact disc, uh, you cannot uh, burn as many holes as you want. So, if the sizes of these wells are small and smaller and smaller, that means your bit size, that means larger bit capacity you can write on compact disks. I hope you, you know what I mean. So, this is only uh, produced by very small spot sizes of uh, laser, lasers of uh, focused, small spot size focuses. But you can produce these 
small focus spots by using lasers of uh, smaller wavelengths or as I uh, discussed about you larger uh, uh, diameters or using uh, lenses which has smaller uh, let's say uh, focal lengths like you see in this picture or uh, in this relation over here so uh, of course again there is this limitation of 1 over 2 factor or lambda by 2 factor uh, if you you know have uh, smaller spot sizes produced by a light source which is only possible for lasers if you're using lasers you can write compact discs you can uh, use this property in laser printers so what is what is a limiting case uh, when you're using a printer suppose you just want to print out a picture or let's say you know uh, letters or so can be seen as pictures uh, talk about the resolution of these letters Let, let's talk about pictures so you want to print out a picture but you want that picture to be as high as possible in the resolution i mean sharper but this can be only be done by if you, the smallest uh, trace that you can leave on the paper is as small as possible all right and if you want that the uh, point the size of the point or uh, or the trace that you leave on the paper as small as like a spot size of a laser like 200 nanometers right 200 nanometers is quite small you get the sharper and sharper pictures so that's uh, why laser printers are producing sharper pictures uh, compared to old uh, traditional dot matrix printers dot matrix printers are very low in the resolutions they are still using it anyway uh, these dot matrix printers, uh, just if you just search for how these principles uh, work in principles of dot laser, the dot uh, matrix printers, and they are using a very small needles. And these needles, of course, has sizes of many orders of magnitude larger than nanometers. Pro probably they are, they, are, they are the size of micrometers, right? And micrometer is a thousand times larger than nanometers. So we are talking about nanometers over here when if you are using lasers in uh, printers. So you can get, you can produce as small uh, as small trace point, trace spot size as small possible. If you're raising, if you're using a laser light source for making pictures, for burning pictures in in in, in papers. But anyway, uh, someone is taking this, uh, you know, presentation for laser printers. Probably he or she will discuss how these, uh, you know, uh, pictures are produced in laser printers and. Uh, you will you you will uh, you know give some information to us and in material processing of course you know uh, we process materials by using lasers and these lasers again requires uh, making some spot sizes of small spot sizes if you're uh, processing materials like burning materials like uh, in, the, in the case of uh, industry you know there are uh, applications that you know uh, you just uh, uh, cut some metals you know you just uh, sharpen some uh, materials etc whatever you do uh, this uh, very small spot size is required and it's also also, also medical medical surgery yeah you see uh, someone is also is, is going to make a presentation about surgery and so like uh, cutting uh, tissues organs etc by using lasers uh, also very sharp and small uh, cutting properties are required if you're you know for example uh, making a surgery inside let's say veins like uh, capillary veins uh, this is requiring very small very small operation sizes and this is can only be provided by some device less uh, like as small as as uh, laser laser can produce very small spot sizes or cutting properties in also medical surgery okay think about the eye surgeries you know correction eye correction lens correction eye lens correction these are you know they are using lasers for this and this is why because lasers are very more delicate than any other uh, surgical device okay so what is this in fact uh, special coherences if you know all about wave is well behaved in space 
and it says what you read over here and it can you can predict the amplitude and the phase at any position at a given time what do i mean by this what what's this picture is showing on you okay there is this term which is called phase front in optics phase front have you uh, heard this uh, phase front term before someone i think uh, you received this optical course, course optic course have you heard this uh, word phase front phase front in no. turkish in turkish maybe we can call it dalga cephesi in turkish duydunuz mu böyle bir şey optik no. <coughs> no okay uh, suppose you have a light source which you see over here uh, a parallel light source parallel light source like this one don't don't just look at this part look at only the the uh, the part which is parallel uh, this probably this light source is produced by a laser beam which is because because it's parallel and it is propagating in this direction or this direction but possibly uh, for this picture it's propagating in this direction no matter it's not more very important in which propagation direction is what the direction of propagation but suppose it's propagating in this direction so you see some hypothetical lines over here these uh, vertical lines vertical to the propagation direction what these lines are representing we call these lines wavefronts but what are them when you when you think when you think of a parallel light beam uh, if you want to picture out the electric field oscillations for the light beams uh, parallel light beams what is the oscillation of the electric electrical beam so uh, electric field uh, oscillations in a beam looks like this right Got very perfect sinusoidal picture but of course there are many of them in a light beam there are many of them many of them uh, comes like on top of each other right and one more let's see of course there are trillions millions uh, uncountable many of all these they all uh, aligned like this i mean what i mean is what what, it, what is this aligned over here is that the uh, maximum points and minimum points of these oscillations of electric fields are aligned okay so suppose this light beam is going in this direction okay it's propagated the propagation direction is in this direction if i just uh, tell you just connect uh, the points of maximum phases in this picture suppose this is a parallel beam and the parallel beam goes like this parallel okay uh, there are there is only 10 minutes to uh, for for the uh, uh, zoom to finish up our lecture because we are limited in, in time for, for only 40 minutes eğer e, bağlantıyı e, kaybederseniz tekrar e, size gönderdiğim aynı linki kullanıp e, e, şey yapıp bağlanabilirsiniz çünkü 40 dakikadan sonra biz devam edeceğiz 40 dakika sadece e, değil okay so let, let's uh, think about this this is uh, many of them is, uh, get together uh, like um, uh, all together all these oscillations of the electric fields and suppose that this beam is going in this direction so i ask you to just connect all the points of maximum phases so maximum phases are here for here here here here for this wave and for the second one is here here here etc if you connect all these maximum points you get this picture right and just forget about these sinusoidal waves what you get in fact these lines which are crossing the laser beam perpendicularly right so what you get is this picture this picture right okay these lines hypothetical lines are called phase fronts okay they are the points in the spatial distribution of the light source they are the points which has the same phase okay so what a phase front is is the collection of points or in sometimes they are surfaces in fact in well, since we're the, the beam is in three-dimensional uh, they are the points which has the surfaces of collection of points which they form a surface 
uh, they at any on this surface at any point the electric field is having exactly the same phase at every point on the surface or at every point on the line well in two dimension it, it shows up a line but in fact it's a plane it's a plane like the plane of my hand right it's a plane one another plane another plane parallel plane a plane these are phase planes phase fronts phase planes uh, but what is specifying or characterizing these points or these surfaces is that any point on the surface or on this phase prone, any point on that, uh, they are having the same phase of the light. I hope this is clear. No. Is that? Okay. So phase front are the collection of points which have the same electric, electric field phase. That's it. And you know what the phase is. Phase is just where you are on this wave train. Are you on the ma maximum point? Are you on the minimum point? Or are you at any any any point in between? If you know what where where you are, you know what the phase is exactly. This is the phase information for a wave. Okay, we're talking about the collection of points, and all these points has having the same phase in special distribution of the light, of course. And we calling this we call we call this phase front. All right. So. For a laser light, this is for a collimated laser light. This is the phase point. Phase points, phase points, phase fronts are phase planes. They are planes of, uh, you know, uh, as in the shape of like a plain paper. They are planes. They are sharp planes like this. Okay, they are not curved. They are not curved. They are just planes. These are phase planes. If your source light is a collimated beam. But you see what happens to this collimated beam or these phase fronts right after a lens. If you put a lens over here and this is the direction of propagation of your laser light. And these are just phase planes, phase planes before the lens. But you see what happens to phase planes are just after the lens. Phase planes becomes curved. They are just becomes curved. And the curvature of these curves, you know, you can you can just picture this these surfaces now as only a portion of a spherical surface, right? And phase planes becomes curved phases so it's curved surfaces curved surfaces of certain uh, a portion of a certain uh, sphere and they go like decreasing radius of curvature whatever this curved surface is if you complete this to a circle or a, a sphere whatever it is radius is these radii are getting smaller and smaller when you approach to the focal point okay because uh, this curvature of this small circle, so a small sphere, and this large sphere are not the same. Because their radii, radii are different. Smaller the uh, sphere, larger the curvature. Larger the curvature means it's, it bends more. In a limited sp amount of space, it bends more. But... In a larger space, if you have a larger uh, radii, uh, the, this curvature is less and less. I mean, you can make the surface of a uh, sphere uh, resembling to surface of a plane if you if this sphere radius is large and large, like just like the surface of Earth. You know, you get this idea, you get this impression that okay, the Earth is flat, uh, according to your point of observation şu e, düz dünyacılar var ya <gülüyor> e, dünyanın yüzeyinin düz olduğunu e, söylüyorlar gerçekten de düz görünüyor yani değil mi sağa sola yukarı aşağı biraz kendi adımlarınızı e, kendi e, size'ınızda bir e, yaratık için gerçekten etrafınızdaki e, you know, e, şey e, bölge flat yani düz but you know, this is not because, in fact, in real life, that uh, you have we have a flat uh, Earth. But the radius of the uh, Earth is very large. When the radius of the Earth is very large, 
it looks like one, only one portion it looks like a flat uh, portion all right all right so anyway we were discussing about this uh, this this this wave this part of the wave okay let me uh, okay only concentrate on this picture the picture above this this picture this part this is a spherical wave okay we call this a spherical wave why because its face fronts are portions of spheres this is a spherical wave this is called a spherical wave and in fact uh, this spherical wave can be produced from a point source which is just located at the uh, focus point if we have an atom radiating at this point so you, you, you will see that atoms will, will create photons if you put an atom like this uh, from time to time it, it radiates some photons and these photons will create a light beam of having face fronts which are spheres and this uh, kind of light source is called or this kind of uh, radiation is called spherical radiation or spherical beam but you see in fact all uh, light sources including a uh, laser initially are spherical beams but we can make them parallel beams by using these uh, uh, uh, lenses devices is called lenses lenses are just correcting or changing the geometrical shape of a face front a lens a thin lens can make a spherical wave front into a planar wave front vice versa similarly it can make a, a planar wave front into a spherical wave front so you can produce a spherical wave out of a parallel beam a collimated beam also you can produce a collimated beam out of a spherical wave i hope uh, you understand what i mean over here we can make it always we can correct we can change the geometrical uh, ge the geometrical uh, shape of face fronts there are face fronts which are called spherical waves spherical waves spherical waves means spherical waves spherical waves spherical waves means you have a, a wave source their face fronts are the shape of a sphere and sorry shall we yes connect again because we are running out of time oh uh, okay but still i got one minute okay anyway let's wait for uh, zoom to just finish the uh, connection uh, anyway let, let me end it okay and connect you can connect it now let's wait for others Evet arkadaşlar, e, Zoom'da diğerleri de bağlansın da şey yapayım. Herkes, ha, zaten İpek iki kişi vardı burada. Evet şimdi e, diğer arkadaşımızı da bekleyelim. O da bağlansın. Tamam Safa da bağlandı. Şimdi şunu ben spotlight yapayım. Şimdi Zoom biliyorsunuz 40 dakika e, maksimum süre veriyor. 40 dakika sonunda atıyor. Attığı zaman tekrar e, aynı linki kullanarak bağlanabilirsiniz. Okay, so I was e, lastly discussing about e, this face fronts. And e, there are mainly two different types of face fronts. As I was discussing that one is the spherical waves and spherical wave fronts the other is collimated collimated waves and the collimated phases are having planar phase fronts spherical waves are having uh, spherical wave phase, uh, phase fronts what's going on with this Kamerada bir fokus problemi yaşıyoruz da bir şey yok. Okay, no, that's fine. Okay, any questions with these face fronts? So, 
We can always uh, uh, correct face fronts as you wish whenever you want. And this is, in fact, this is the only way to, you know, uh, produce microscopes, also produce uh, telescopes. Telescope is just uh, uh, making uh, parallel beams into spherical waves, and uh, microscopes are pr uh, producing uh, just uh, parallel beams out of uh, spherical waves. So they're just uh, one and the same device, but uh, working in the different directions. Okay. So, but uh, I want to show you another picture. Uh, this picture, I'm just erasing this, growing over here. So what you see is that you see over here, the first two pictures are, uh, uh, in fact, they're laser sources. This is a spherical laser source. This is a light wave coming out of an atom or a molecule. Okay. And uh, again, the same so uh, uh, the uh, same uh, uh, source, but it is corrected to have a collimated beam. But you see over here, an ordinary light source like this arc light, a normal, uh, let's say, a, a, a conventional classical light bulb. These kind of uh, light sources are producing uh, light rays. Well, on these light rays, you see the shape of face fronts. They are zigzag lines. They are very irregular zigzag lines. Okay? And these are the face fronts for these kind of uh, classical light sources other than lasers. Okay? So you see with this kind of uh, face fronts, even if you are even if you are using a kind of uh, lenses over here, these lenses will not produce a perfectly neat parallel beams out of these zigzag uh, face fronts. Okay, so that's why uh, we cannot produce perfect uh, light rays like a big, big parallel light rays, parallel light beams out of ordinary uh, classical conventional light sources because their face fronts, their phases are not well defined. Over here, the phases and the face fronts are well defined. They are either very perfect uh, spherical shape, uh, shapes, spherical uh, surfaces, or planar surfaces that are very well defined. But over here, conventional light sources are they are not they are not having well defined face fronts. Okay, so that's the reason that uh, we cannot produce a good. Uh, magnification or good magnification in microscope or telescopes by using ordinary light sources. Well, of course, uh, you can use always uh, ordinary light sources uh, to uh, produce pictures out of a op uh, microscope or a telescope. That's what you might do, what they do, in fact, mostly. But uh, out of these pictures, out of these devices, you cannot produce like you cannot enlarge the pictures. These uh, features as small as like uh, nanometer sizes, like as small as like uh, two hundred nanometers. Or the best you can get is you can get a resolution of micron size. So in optical microscopes, a conventional microscope, you can see or you can resolve uh, the creatures or the features as uh, small as like micron size, not uh, smaller than microns because you're using ordinary light. If you were used uh, like a uh, laser light in this microscope, then in, in that case only you can get down to like nanometer size, hundreds of nanometers of course, not like 10 nanometers, but like uh, 200 nanometers, not smaller than 200 nanometers. Okay. I hope this is clear now and you have a, a more technical explanation of that why you cannot resolve objects as small as like uh, nanometers like 10 nanometers by using ordinary microscopes or you know you can now explain it uh, in more technical terms why you cannot do this so as the third uh, unique property of uh, laser sources is that 
it's high power. Uh, only if by only if you're using lasers, you can produce uh, the powers of very high orders of magnitude uh, in light sources. Okay, you know what I mean is um, what I mean is just uh, by using a pulse laser or continuous wavelength laser. I will explain uh, what a pulse laser is uh, in coming slide. Uh, by using a continuous wavelength laser, you can produce a powers of like on the order of megawatts. But by using a pulse laser, this power can go into exawatt uh, order, like 10 to 18 watts. Okay. You know what? Uh, uh, 700 watts is correspondingly one horsepower. In mechanical terms, 700 watts correspond to one horsepower. And uh, can you imagine how many horses are in this power? 10 to 18. Okay. So uh, you can reach like uh, the powers of energy by using light sources, uh, light sources are like lasers, the orders of 10 to 18 watts. This corresponds to you can produce a spot which you can, you know, uh, focus the energy of high energies like as high as the surface energy of the uh, sun. Okay, we can make spots spots uh, on Earth. We can produce spots on Earth as high as energies of on on, on the surface of sun or direct sun. Okay. Ee, dünyada e, güneşin yüzeyindeki sıcaklığın hatta daha da fazlası güneşin yüzeyindeki sıcaklık like, e, e, kaç derece? 6000 derece falan yüzey sıcaklığı ama dünyada 6000 dereceden çok çok daha yüksek sıcaklıklara erişen noktaları lazer ışığı kullanarak yapabiliyoruz And this you cannot use any other light source other than lasers you can produce this high amount of powers uh, uh, as the uh, light source that you can only use lasers and this is also one other unique property of lasers you can produce extreme extremely high amount of high powers by using lasers okay Elektrik melektrik falan kullanarak bu kadar yüksek güçlere e, ulaşamazsınız. Ama. Ancak e, ışık kullanarak e, bir noktada çok yüksek e, güce sadece ve sadece lazer ışık kullanarak ulaşabiliyoruz. Öyle elektrikle yoksa ya da işte kaynakla maynakla falan bu, bu derece 10 üzeri 18 wattlık e, e, seviyelere ulaşmanız mümkün değil. And this is another unique property of Laser, of course. Uh, do we require this high amount of powers? Of course, why not? Uh, in terms of you know industry in, in the material processing, you know, they cut. They are cutting like uh, uh, centimeters of uh, thickness of metals by in in seconds, in just seconds by using laser light. And this is very extremely useful in material processing. Also in fusion. Fusion, what is fusion? Fusion is, uh, you know, producing a spot like very high energies. Very high energies of spots. Uh, if you can make, uh, these are called fusion. And this is required in, in thermonuclear, on, in nuclear power. There are two types of diff uh, different nuclear powers, right? One fusion. One is fusion. Uh, fusion. It's called fusion and the other is fusion there is only one letter is different in in fusion we just uh, combine atoms all together to produce energy in fusion we just break apart the uh, nucleus of atoms to uh, just uh, get energy out of it uh, only uh, th this this is the difference between fusion and fusion if you want to combine, but in fusion power, in fusion nuclear reactors, uh, the amount of power you produce is orders of magnitude larger than fusion reactors. Uh, 
e, cold fusion they call nowadays i mean we haven't reached this cold fusion technology yet but if you reach this cold fusion technology the energy problem of what will be just uh, gone yeah cold fusion uh, the way we produce nuclear uh, energy if you reach this fusion technology then everything is clear and the fusion re uh, nuclear reactors are not producing like uh, uh, nuclear uh, garbage as as high as uh, in usual conventional nuclear reactors you have a uh, smaller uh, nuclear garbage and you have larger amounts of energy uh, so they are more efficient much more efficient in compared to conventional nuclear reactors to be able to unite uh, the uh, um, atomic nuclei in fusion reactors you need the uh, laser this can be, this can only be happened by using uh, laser light so laser laser is the key element in, in reaching fusion uh, new technology of uh, nuclear energies in, in fusion nuclear energies fusion nuclear reactors and this only happens uh, will only happen by using lasers of course in military this high amount of uh, powers are you know are very destructive so they can use in uh, constructing these weapons very high amount of weapons uh, very this uh, high destruction uh, property weapons you can make out of uh, out of these high power lasers you can use this in military and also in non-linear in, in fundamental uh, research there is this uh, special field of uh, optics it's called non-linear optics in this non-linear optics you require some uh, certain uh, optical processes which is called non-linear optics uh, in order to reach these uh, or uh, uh, you know uh, produce this uh, phenomenon in non-linear optics you need very high power lasers and non-linear optics is required to produce entangled photons and entangled photons if you have heard about this is one of the key element in the quantum computation and quantum information science okay uh, this is next generation of uh, information and computation is going to be, of course, new technology. We haven't reached this technology yet. And this technology, uh, uh, this high power of lasers is required because we need nonlinear optical phenomena to reach this. Okay. Uh, next property is white tuning rate. What is white tuning rate? Well, it's the only thing that uh, you can produce almost every color of laser light now we can produce in in technology almost all all colors of lasers even in in uh, like uh, uh, ultraviolet in the ultraviolet range or infrared range we, we can produce uh, uh, uh, invisible laser light sources that you cannot use uh, you cannot see with your naked eye uh, one uh, uh, case is that you go higher in frequency higher than the frequency of uh, uh, blue color blue light color and this is called ultraviolet also we we, we can just develop a, a excimer lasers like x-ray lasers we can develop these lasers cannot be seen by your naked eyes and also we can produce uh, lasers of infrared which you cannot uh, see as low power lasers in terms of uh, single photons energy they are low power lasers but in between invisible light source we can produce almost in every color uh, you can produce a laser light source so this is called the white tuning range i mean we can tune the wavelength of any laser source uh, in any value in in the uh, visible spectrum okay so let me finish up over here and uh, this is the typical applications of uh, applying this white tuning of course if you are developing like uh, spectrometer devices this is required if your spectrometer de devices can collect on uh, process all colors all different wavelengths then you have very good uh, spectrometer light and i will just cut over here i will finish it right at this point uh, you can produce very short uh, pulse widths, very short uh, pulses of light sources 
only by using lasers and i will discuss this uh, next week okay well this is the last thing that in fact i will talk about but uh, we can just postpone this later on and the other thing is that i think last la uh, next week sorry next week uh, you will start your uh, presentations önümüzdeki hafta prezentasyonlar sizin sunumlarınıza başlayacak başlayacaksınız sunumlarınızı e, haftaya kadar önümüzdeki haftaya kadar öyle e, konuşmuştuk galiba zannedersem değil mi haftaya ilk sunumlar başlayacaktı doğru mu evet, evet, evet. E, e, herkes hangi sunumları yapacak biliyor ilk sunumlarınızı onları vermiştim zannedersem e, ben tabi e, unuttum size verdiğim e, İpek vardı değil mi? İpek hangi sunum yapacaktı? İki sunum vardı. İpek. Orada mı İpek? Burada mı hocam? Birinci lazer printer. Tamam lazer printer. İkinci Merve mi vardı bir de? Merve vardı. CD Bir de Lazy. Lazy. Safa, which presentation are you going to make? First one is barcode scanner. Barcode scanner. Second one is laser skin care. Laser skin care. Okay. So starting from next week, uh, you will start your presentations. Of course, we cannot finish all the presentations on Monday. So you will start, uh, maybe everyone will make... Uh, her own first representations and maybe next week we can continue okay, okay.